giving you a voice. Making it loud our own way. Welcome, Welcome to, to the fun. fun. First updates now, FRC is produced in partnership with Stryker. Discover why so many first alumni and mentors are putting Stryker first when it comes to their careers. Visit careers.stryker.com forward slash first to view openings, internships, and co-ops tailored to those who are in first. That's careers.stryker.com forward slash first. And by the Blue Alliance. Keep up to date on all live and archive first robotics events and team stats at thebluealliance.com. And also viewers like you. We need your help to keep fun at loud, live, and independent. Help us by visiting our Patreon to pledge your support at patreon.com forward slash first updates now. You can also support fun live on Twitch for a few bucks a month or by linking your Prime account for free and clicking subscribe. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to Infimidation. Tonight, we will recap all five events that happened week two here in Michigan, bring on a guest host who is Grant from 226 The Hammerheads to talk about their hectic weekend at the St. Joseph District, announce the Michigan top 10 teams from the Fun FRC Top 25 poll, as well as mention the host top 10 teams, and also preview the five events that we have coming up in week three. Reporting for First Updates Now, I'm Nick Jr. I'm Sky. I'm Steve. And I'm Tanner. We also have some great giveaways tonight for this show, Fim fans. Tyler, what do you have for us tonight? Yeah, from our friends, uh, the Thrifty Bot are giving away another set of those vectored intake wheels. Only 29 left in stock, guys. So if you haven't picked some up and you need them, this is a great opportunity for you to win some. Or, you know, you can just, you know, go buy some. Come on, go do that, too. So I'm sure they need money, right? So, uh, yeah. So uh, once again, from uh, the Thrifty Bot, vectored intake wheels. And then we also have from our friends, Playing with Fusion, uh, the CAN base time of flight sensor. Uh, you know, I was just at the Midwest Regional uh, this past weekend, and I saw Argos, one of my favorite teams, 1756, uh, using these as well. So definitely a, a popular thing uh, that we're seeing uh, from teams. Uh, and just make, you, make sure you go check it out, playingwithfusion.com is where you can go ahead and do something like that. And this CAN sensor is used for measuring absolute distance to a target from 30 millimeters to four meters. I mean, I'm not really good at conversion, but that's what, like 14 feet, something like that. So um, with a millimeter resolution of uh, 100 hertz, uh, a library support for, for everything you need on all three major FRC languages. So we'll be giving this away later in the show, actually giving away two of the time of flight sensors uh, in separate giveaways. Like we'll do just draw twice for it. And then once of the 30 bot wheels, just make sure you listen. Uh, for the keyword, make sure you're following. And if you do subscribe, you're going to get five times luck to win. Join that hype train that's going on right now in chat, by the way. Love to have you on board. Choo-choo, let's go with the Infinbation recap. Hey, thanks again, Tyler, for that. And thanks to our uh, friends at Playing With Fusion as well as the Thrifty Bot. So with that being said, we had a, some great events here in this uh, past week of Michigan. So let's jump right in and talk about the first event we were recapping this week. Sky, what do you have for us? All right. So St. Joseph, um, driving out there on Friday morning for myself. The weather wasn't particularly awesome, but uh, that didn't stop the atmosphere from inside being absolutely electric. Uh, there was no shortage of teams that know how to build some pretty good machines by the time States rolls around uh, at this event. This includes the average Joes, Trisonics, Tech Bikes, Engineers, Strike Force. Um, as a testament to how... Uh, this early season slugfest slash, or yeah, no team really went undefeated here. Uh, there was a lot of uh, punches back and forth, and really it came down to a, a consistency in calls more than everything. Um, at lunch on Saturday, uh, 2337, the engineers from Grand Blank ranked first uh, with a still spectacularly accurate autonomous shooting routine uh pulling in from both sides or from one side when they're getting getting fed with that 1717 tribute machine uh and then their consistent climb at the end uh saw them through uh 226 the hammerheads uh from troy ranked uh second uh, alliance selection had 2337 pick up 2767 strike force um after their incident uh <laughs> um and then uh, going into a limbs, uh, the top half of the bracket kind of cruised through. Uh, and then Alliance number one exited a little early. Um, there was some, some strategy to 
cycle and move some power cells around, which resulted in a lot of uh, of G8s, um, just with which is uh, using a power cell to make parts of gameplay more difficult uh, intentionally against your opponent. And uh, while I'm on the fence where some of those were deserved, uh, a few of them definitely were deserved. Uh, but that one instance was was not the only thing that managed to knock out the number one alliance. There was other stuff going on. So uh, the number two alliance kind of picked up the mantle after that. Um, and this was the Hammerheads. And they kind of got to their, their position there with a kind of a, a up close batter shot and a, a good climb. Um, we will talk further about the the last bit of a, a limbs uh, here at St. Joe with our guest Grant later on in the show. Uh, but in the end, the Hammerheads came out on top. Like I said, they're from Troy. They were paired with uh, 5927 the Globe Trotters from up the road in Zealand and uh, 6588 Counter Torque from Lawton. Uh, the finalists uh, were 2054 the Tech Fikes from Hopkins. Uh, 3620, the home team, the average Joes from St. Joe, and then uh, 4237, Lancebot from Stevensville. Uh, chairmans went to 4855, Ramageddon. I completely called that one wrong. I thought that was going to uh, the Hammerheads, but the Hammerheads picked up Engineering Inspiration. So uh, everything's probably all fine there. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, there was... Uh, yeah, so Hammerheads with that uh, gold, silver, uh, cling bling. Uh, and then the rookie All Star uh, went to 8342 uh, Musty Squared. Um, interesting notes on the weekend. Uh, right at the very end of uh, or the second to last qual matches for uh, 2767, uh, kind of managed to knock the turret clean off of the robot. Uh, and. Uh, yeah, so that was fun. Um, <laughs> uh, really stressful uh, for the short term, but uh, came out ahead in the next match, posted the qualification uh, high score. Uh, so managed to recover from that relatively decently. <laughs> uh, but um, other than that, headless horseman, headless tunnel rat situation, <laughs> uh, how are things going in Milford there, Nick? Yeah, so, I mean, as usual, Milford was a great one in the books, as always. A um, few interesting topics here. Um, had one of the highest ranking scores for the state of Michigan, uh, with 67 the hot team coming in with a 2.41 ranking score. So, uh, definitely teams are starting to get those climb RPs now that uh, more teams are starting to climb. So, uh, 63-44, the Gigawatts had a really strong showing, um, played fairly impressive in qualifications. Um, maybe made a questionable pick in the um, alliance selection, but I'll kind of go into that later. Um, 3707, uh, reigning world champion also is here um, with a pneumatic tire swerve. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen that happen before, but um, it proved to help them out throughout the weekend. Um, one thing here uh, that I noticed is that uh, Gems, who was uh, reigning state champions uh, from last year in Michigan, had a bit of a rough weekend, but um, I expect them to bounce back and come up, come up from that. So uh, the winners of Milford was our uh, number one alliance captain by 67, the hot team. They went on to pick 5561 Raider Robotics and to round out that number one alliance uh, that was really a well, well-rounded alliance is 1189 the Gearheads. Um, <clears throat> the first alliance dropped the first qual match or first dropped the first uh, quarterfinal match, but didn't lose after that. Uh, they scored 203 points twice in quarters. Um, and like I said earlier, overall was a really well-rounded alliance. In the finals, uh, they met the number seven seed, captained by a 7769 OS crew. Uh, which would, they went on to pick uh, 5053 Laker Robotics, and to round out that alliance was 7753 OSTC Sweetbots. Um, to be honest with you, the number seven alliance really came out of the woodworks. Um, they did a phenomenal job facing adversity and playing through eliminations. Uh, personally, when I saw this alliance, I sort of had money that they were at least going to make it to semis and maybe even push their ticket to the finals. And uh, obviously they showed that. So um, I'm expecting, you know, especially OS Crew 7769, who is uh, Steve Smick on their team now to really um, push through. And, you know, they already have a pretty, pretty great robot already. And I'm ex ex I can't wait to see what they bring in the future. So uh, Chairman's was led, or Chairman's was taken by 66 Grizzly Robotics. Uh, no surprise here. They've won probably two or three now at uh, FIM States. Uh, so, I mean, they're right there pushing that ticket to Hall of Fame. So uh, 
EI went to 57-12. Hemlock's Gray Matter also had a good robot showing here this weekend. And Rookie All-Star was rounded out by 82-99 Techno Falcons. Uh, me and Steve were at Kettering. So, uh, Steve, what do you got for Kettering? Yes, yeah, so at Kettering 2, the favorites going into this event was definitely 1684, the Chimeras, as all eyes were, were on them as uh, that almost all-black robot from the pier after their reveal video dropped last week. Unfortunately for them, they had some considerable shooter issues on day one that had them sitting in the lower teens and upper 20s uh, ranked most of the day. Late in the day, they kind of got their stuff together on Friday, and then Saturday they really turned it around and were shooting lights out from up close. They had this layup shot that was hitting 5 of 5. Um, their sixth eight ball Auton was working flawlessly all day Saturday once they dialed that shooter in. One of the better Autons that I've seen so far. Um, however, it was the House of Cards 35 34 from Davison that came out ranked number one with a 10 and 2 record after 80 qualification matches, followed by 55 33 the Electric Horsepower and 56 97 the Bearcats from Bridgeport, both with 9 and 3 records as your top three ranked teams. 35-34 uh, kind of stunned many observers going out of the top 15 to snag that 17th ranked Chimeras, who would turn out to be a strong choice as their first pick. Uh, rounding out that first year alliance was a rookie team that I saw up in Traverse City as well last week um, from Boyne Falls, the Boyne Falls Loggers, Team 8400. Um, the first seed rolled through quarters, but they dropped their first uh, match of semis to the alliance of 5046, the Jack Up Jackets from Memphis, 5166, the Freeland Fabricators, and... 5562 Cardinal Commanders from um, Dryden, mentored by our very own Freddie. Um, the next two matches went the first seed alliance's way after some great 1v3 defense by the on that blue alliance by the Chimeras and ranking up 48 penalty points, most of those on those Cardinal Commanders, um, driving up on top of the 1684 robot. So the number one seed, number one seed would meet the number two seed in the finals. Um, that number two seed was 5533 Electric Horsepower from Clio. They had picked 503 Frog Force from Novi and 72, 7192 the Blue Thunderneers from Croswell. Um, and the number one alliance would take both finals matches fairly handily to be your Kettering 2 district champions. Um, this is the second blue banner for Davison in their history and the first at Kettering as well as the Chimera's first Kettering win. Chimera's have progressed uh, one round farther every year since... Um, Kettering 2 became a thing in 2017, finishing as finalists last year, and finally getting that blue banner this year. This is their third blue banner in as many years, and that team is steadily getting better and better since 2016. So once again, your winners were 35-34, the House of Cards from Davison, 1684, my Chimeras from Lapeer, and 8400, Boyne Falls Loggers from Boyne Falls. Uh, the finalists were 55-33, Electric Horsepower, 503 Frog Force, and 7v192, the Blue Thundaneers from Roswell. Chairmans, uh, no real surprise here. I thought the contenders were 1684 and 503, and 503 took that chairman, so they got that silver gold cling bling. Um, EI went to the Chimeras, 1684, so they got that gold silver cling bling. The rookie all star went to 8193, the Steel Stingers from New Lothrop. And, um, you know, I thought a really good showing by that rookie team that was on our number one alliance there, 8400. They've, they were very strong this weekend as well. So. Scott, tell us uh, how Jackson played out this week. All right. So Jackson went as about one would expect. Um, it was clear that 1023 Bedford Express out of Temperance, uh, and they went 10-2 and two and ended up picking up uh, 862 Lightning Robotics from Canton and uh, 6591 Panther Powered from Stockbridge. And they just cruised through a limbs. Um the final saw them come up against the number two alliance comprised of uh, 5676, the Heroes from Hillsdale, and 2611, the Jackstown Vectors from Jackson, uh, and uh, 5205, Full Metal Jackets from Concord. Uh, the number one alliance easily took this uh, in two matches. Uh, the winners, like I said, were 1023 Bedford Express, 862 Lightning, uh, and 6591 Panther Powered. The finalists, uh, 5676, 2611, and uh, 5205. Chairman's not a particular surprise. This one went to 1023 Bedford Express. I mean, they've been doing great work for years now at this point. But that means we've got a double gold cling bling. Uh, so, woo -woo. Um, engineering inspiration went to 3655 Tractor Technicians from Mason. Um, so they, as far as I can tell, are really the only ones uh, 
putting up a fight uh, for chairman's potentially against uh, Bedford. Uh, and then rookie all-star uh, went to 83-73. Ben V 9.5 from Blissfield. Um, that's a mouthful. Uh, so uh, good job, everybody. Um, how about Kingsford, Tanner? Yeah, so Kingsford overall was one of the most level playing fields we've seen yet in FIM. And uh, probably, I don't think, uh, the first and the last. Uh, featured 30-some UP teams and a few uh, downstate teams, as well as a visitor from Indiana. Uh, this competition saw most matches come down to the beginning autos and the endgame climbs that really determined how this match was going to play out. Uh, once the dust settled, though, in Kingsford, we saw 38-75 secure the number one rank, followed closely by 66-37 and 8-57, and that second and third spot, rank, uh, respectively. Um 3875 moved on to Alliance Selections, picking the fourth ranked team of 4391, the Brave Bots, and then grabbing 7768. With this alliance, 3875 looked up to make for their quarterfinals exit at MCC just a weekend prior. Uh, the number one alliance went on to plow through quarterfinals and semis and to face off against the number three alliance of 857, 7782, and 6569 in the finals. And now these final matches were close. The first match decided by one point and the second being decided by two. So when I said this event could have been anyone's, I wasn't lying. Uh, I guess you could say the number one alliance, however, couldn't hang because at the end of the day, it was the number three alliance that was able to secure the win using with uh, the alliance's uh, triple climb ability. Uh, the two strats I saw really prevalent, especially in these end games and the final matches, um, is teleop scoring versus end game scoring. So like shooting all the power ports as much as you can, and then the climbs, and then also the two bots on offense on one bot on defense versus the third seeded alliances, three bots all on O. Uh, so the third seed alliance had uh, also a steal of a pick in 65-69. So like I said, winners go to 857 Superior RoboWorks from Houghton, Michigan, 7782 Wolverine Circuit Breakers from Rock, Michigan, and 6569 Gladiators from Ontonagon, an all UP alliance. Uh, this also is 7782's first event win, along with 857's first event win, ending 857's 19-year Blue Banner drought, as some of the students like to call it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, finalists go to 3875 Red Storm Robotics from Kentwood, Michigan, uh, 4391 Brave Bots from Gladstone, and 7768 the Iron Hill uh, Atomic. I pronounced it right before, automatons, Iron River. Uh, Chairman's goes to 3875 Red Storm Robotics, uh, giving them that cling bing with the uh, Chairman's and the finalist medal. Um, EA goes to Copper Bots from Calumet, Michigan. And Rookie All-Star goes to Happy Rock Brave Bots from Gladstone, Michigan. Kind of that play on words. Uh, so looking at it, I think Tyler's got something to do uh, with our sponsor, Striker. Uh, so, Tyler, why don't you take away with that? I just want to point out the uh, poll that we just had to finish real quick, too. Uh, so, best event of week two as voted by the chat. 43% says St. Joseph is the uh, best event of week two. Followed pretty close by uh, Jackson and then a big drop-off after that. Uh, so, congrats, St. Saint- Joseph? Sure, why not? So uh, with that said, though, uh, we're going to be doing a couple things. We're going to be starting uh, a giveaway in just a moment here for our friends at the Thrifty Bop. Before we do that, we do have to tell you uh, about the amazing people over at Striker. Guys, Striker is awesome. That's all we got to say, really. Are we done? No. Okay. So uh, with that said, uh, Striker, uh, you know, I just looked up on their careers page. You go to careers.striker.com forward slash first. Uh, it will get you to a great page to tell you more about how they're involved with STEM programs. Uh, and I just looked up just in Kalamazoo, Michigan, 262 jobs available. Holy cow. And I'm sure they're all uh, super high paying. And guess what? The best thing about them is that if you're in first, they will support your journey of being in first. doesn't matter if you're an intern co-op looking for your first career or you know you're a really old dude and you want a new career and you know any of those are great so uh with that said go check out striker s-t-r-y-k-e-r.com uh and you can learn more about the careers that they have available uh just look at some of these categories 104 jobs just in the kalamazoo michigan for engineers uh, out there what about marketing i'm a marketer let's find out marketing this is, this is, we're doing live stuff here, guys. So 62 jobs. All right. What am I, yeah, apply, baby. What am I going to apply for here, guys? Get me to move to Michigan <laughs> and let's see what Senior happens. Senior sales analyst. That sounds good to Senior me. Senior sales <laughs> analyst. 
How about digital marketing associate? I, I want to be a full manager, none of the associate manager crap. All right. So <laughs> we'll, we'll see about that. Maybe, maybe I'll be moving over uh, soon enough. But guys, go check out Strecker. Uh, love them so much. Thank them for supporting uh, our shows. They really do make it happen. And obviously, you're super cool because we can do reads like this, and they're totally cool with it. So that's why, that's why we love them so much. Go, so go check them out, uh, S-T-R-Y-K-E-R. Uh, with that said, we're going to start actually our first giveaway for our friends at the Thrifty Bot. Uh, so four pack of vectored intake wheels. Uh, love these things. You see them on so many robots this year. Uh, I'm sure our friends at uh, Ryan Donio and other friends made a crap ton of money, but you know why not make them <laughs> some more? So uh, with that said, uh, hashtag thrifty is going to be the keyword if you're interested in winning, not thrifty 100. Hashtag thrifty today. We'll do the 100 thing at some point, but hashtag thrifty. Uh, we're going to draw. It's going to be a few minutes before we do the drawing. Uh, just don't forget that you do need to uh, be following the channel and subscribers get five tons. Like if you join foundation, tons of great benefits, including we just gave away three giveaways that went unclaimed this past week. And we posted in our super secret uh, uh, channel just for our subscribers. Uh, on there to win so uh, not only that uh, but of course you support us if you're watching live on twitch it gets rid of those really dumb pre-roll twitch ads that we can't turn off and i'm sorry about that i would if i could uh, but you do get ad free uh, viewing that way too in regards to twitch pre-roll so uh what's once again hashtag thrifty and we'll draw for that it's gonna be a few minutes before we do that yeah so thank you tyler and uh thank you to our friends at striker uh, so next, we are going to have Grant, the drive coach from Team 226, the Hammerheads, come on and talk about their crazy weekend they had at St. Joe. Uh, While well, we get Grant situated and the Skype call, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the number one seed and the winner of the Kettering Number 2 District, Team 3534, the House of Cards. Hey, fun fans. I'm Nick Jr. here with uh, first, uh, reporting for First Updates Now on the Infimidation Show. I'm currently here with Team 3534, the House of Cards, who are currently the number one seed here at Kettering Event Number 2. I'm here with Caleb, Michael, and Andrew, and we're going to go ahead and talk a little bit about the robot from Davidson, Michigan. So, Caleb, want to go ahead and start us off? Yeah, so the first thing that I want to show, oh. the first thing that I want to show you is this auto, our auto-indexing system. Um, we, put, we don't have enough space to store all five balls in our pinball track. So we come here and put one down at the bottom of this wheel, one right in the middle, and then one at the top, so that way it stores it and we're all compact. And then we come here through the shooter, and we have an S curve that leads up to the shooter, and then we, sh we shoot out the top with two Falcons. Hey, that, that's awesome. I think it's definitely one of the more unique robots. I've seen you guys usually do a lot of the, the pipe bending, so I'm glad to see you guys brought that back. Yeah, Michael, you want to go ahead and introduce us to a little bit more? So this is our elevator right here. Do you want to go up on the elevator? So the first thing is uh, we have our hook. And right here we can hook onto the bar and translate side to side because we have wheels inside that are powered by this window motor. And we have a Falcon 500 with a 30 to 1 gearbox. And it's made out of linear drawer slides and polycarb. So it's light but uh, slides good. Yeah, awesome. Thanks for showing that. Watching you guys the last match, I saw you guys were able to translate on the bar, and, you know, that climber is definitely helping you rank number one. So, Andrew, you want to go and talk us a little bit about more? So, uh, I would like to show you our intake, which I think is really unique compared to some other robots. We did a lot of prototyping at the beginning of the season, and we struggled with some powered intakes. So, this is a lot simpler. So, yep. It just goes in and moves onto the pinball track where it's all gravity fed into the indexing wheel, which Caleb talked about, which means that it's really hard to get it jammed, and we've had really great success with it. Yeah, awesome. I think it's uh, definitely one of the more uh, unique things about this robot that we've seen. So um, going through build season, obviously no bag day this year. you got about another two weeks approximately going into Kettering 2. So uh, Caleb, you want to go ahead and talk a little bit about how your build season went and what you guys overcome if there was any issues? So uh, obviously with build season, or ba no bag tag, build team took a little bit longer. So as, as one of the, the main programmer, we had a lot more time to tune our uh, what we call DTM, which is where we aim and shoot with like a distance table and stuff like that. So that the extra time was really helpful to get it locked in and tuned in. And we, when we shoot, we're we're usually pretty accurate. Awesome. Uh, you know, overall, always great robots from Team 3534, the House of Cards. So um, you guys are going to be in at Marysville Week 6, correct? So um, I'm with 4130. I'll see you guys there. So um, on behalf of uh, First Updates Now, I'm Nick Jr., The Infimidation Show. 
So thanks again, Tyler, for showing that. Uh, 3534, House of Cards, as always, built quality robots, in my opinion. Um, I personally want to take the time to congratulate them on a great event in Kettering 2. Um, I know Steve's team, 1684, had the opportunity to play with them this weekend, and they are overall just a great team. Uh, very respectful and a true, a, a true resemblance of gracious professionalism. Um, so now, without further ado, we do have a guest on. Um, this is Grant, the drive coach uh, from Team 226, the Hammerheads, captain of the number two Alliance, and the winner of the South of the St. Joseph district. Grant, go ahead and introduce yourself. Hi. So uh, as you mentioned, I'm Grant Reichenbach. I'm currently a student at Wayne State University. I'm in my last semester, so I'll be graduating uh, at the, the first day of the world championship this year. Uh, also a 2016 alumni of team 910, the Foley Freeze. Uh, and then I joined team 226 as their design and strategy mentor, as well as their drive coach uh, in the off season of 2017. Um, the Team 226, we're uh, based out of Troy and Athens High School, and we're the hosts of the Troy District event all the way back since 2009 when districts first started. Um, as for our robot this year that we competed with, um, we've got the, the Mark II Swerve Drive, worked out super well for us, as well as a Fairlane shooter with a two-position hood, so we're able to shoot all the way up against the wall, um, all the way to the front of the control panel. So we've got a, a pretty wide range of distance for us there. Um, we have our intake perpendicular to our shooter for minimized turning due to our, uh, our swerve drive. And then for our indexer, we've got Vex belts and Versa rollers, um, drawing some inspiration from Team 971 in 2012. Um, and then for our climber, um, probably one of the proudest parts of our robot, uh, it's just a single post, four stage cascading elevator hooked up to a, a Falcon for a, a pretty quick, uh, reliable climb. Yeah, so I mean, overall, I, have, I think all the hosts on here can pr uh, agree that uh, it's a pretty, pretty damn good looking machine. So, um, so again, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, so, I mean, going into this weekend, um, so I'm going to ask a question, and then if any of the hosts have any other ones, you're more than welcome to. But um, going into this weekend, uh, kind of what were your expectations from St. Joe, knowing that um, seeing the competitiveness from the Nerds Week One, and then obviously you got the Warrior of the Two Time World Champion Strike Force there. So, how'd you guys, how'd you guys think you were going to perform, and what were you kind of expecting out of it? So, of course, we knew uh, Ender Nerds and Strike Force were going to be there, so it wasn't going to be an easy competition by any means. But based on watching a lot of the week one competitions, we thought, uh, and from our own practice matches, we thought we were going to be uh, decently competitive, maybe probably somewhere in the top eight. Um, and then as we went through qualifications, um, we uh, basically relied on our strategy to uh, score a lot of balls uh, as layups, like uh, batter shots, as Sky had mentioned before, that... Uh, they were a lot more reliable. The backspin on the, backspin on the balls um, allowed them to go really easily into the inner port. And then I think the biggest uh, contributing factor to our number two ranking at the end of qualifications was our, our climber. We were able to secure the third RP in maybe 10 out of our 12 matches or, or uh, 8 to 10 out of our 12 matches. And so that uh, put us all the way up to, to number two. Um, a lot of other really great uh, robots, as Sky mentioned before, uh, certainly not an, an easy event by any means. Um, other big competitors that he mentioned were uh, 2054, Tech Vikes, uh, Average Joe's 3620, 4237, um, a whole bunch of them, really. Yeah, for sure. So um, obviously, you know, after qualification, you guys ended up ranked two. Um, so why don't you go ahead and kind of walk me through your picks and why you decided what? Um. So our, our first pick, again, as Sky mentioned before, we picked up 59-27, the Globetrotters, um, somebody that we hadn't really uh, anticipated being a, a big powerhouse going into the event. Um, but they turned out to be a super solid trench cycler, scoring uh, 10 to 15 balls in the outer port or inner port uh, per match. Uh, we had played with them in a qualification match against 23-37, the Engineers, um, and won that match against them. So we knew we were probably going to have to work together like we did in that qual match uh, if we wanted to have any chance in Elims. Um, and then for our second pick, we picked up 6588 Counter Torque Robotics um, for their solid initiation line defense and then a reliable climb. Um, we figured we would need that triple climb in probably all of our uh, elimination matches if we wanted to have any chance of winning. And so that was kind of our intent as for strategy. Um, we would be doing our sweeping balls from uh, the opponent's human station and dumping them in the outer port for our layups, 59-27 running trench cycles, and then 65-88 playing defense, and then lining up about uh, 30 seconds to go secure that triple climb. 
Yeah, uh, so thank you for giving that insight. Um, any other hosts got any quick questions really quick before I move on? Um, yeah, so I was curious when you made through the course of the season, uh, when you made that kind of strategy decision to build your bot to kind of make that uh, cleanup bot in front um, and how that kind of factored into Because you mentioned you had the intake off to the side, right, to help right. with uh, expediating on getting the, the balls from the overflow and whatnot. But But how did the decision to work up front factor into robot design? Um, so this was more of a, I guess I, I helped drive that decision a little bit. Being a student on a team in 2016 that did a lot of batter shots, um, I really wanted to go for that up close wall shot from the target zone where you're protected, of course. Um, and so I figured, um, or we figured as a team, um, being that being able to steal from your opponents there and then quickly moving over uh, to score in the outer port from that zone is, is about like 10, 15 feet. So it's a, it's a quick drive and you'd be able to pick up a lot of balls there and then create that overflow in their human player station and just keep doing that over and over until you got to go climb. Hey, uh, so, I mean, like I said earlier, obviously looks like a great machine. So uh, thanks again for that. Tyler, you had something to add? Maybe not. I thought you said me. Okay, no problem. Um, so uh, obviously going into quarters, um, I know I saw that one of the climbers of your alliance members wasn't working, but um, kind of go ahead and walk me through uh, the, the, the semifinals. Obviously, a lot of stuff was going on between your matches um, and then the other side of the bracket. So go ahead and kind of walk me through that. Yeah, quarters and semis just in general were absolutely the roughest parts of elims for us because for every single match at least one of us had something wrong with our robot um between 65 idiots climber not working for all of quarters they told us right after lunch that it wasn't uh working so we scrambled through quarters trying to fix it um we jammed in semis uh 59 27 jammed in semis in several matches actually um they were having um other climber issues themselves lost vision tracking in another match and the quarters and semis were just a hodgepodge of different issues amongst our uh, all of our alliance members. Um, whereas, while well, one robot was having an issue, other ones were picking up that slack, and we were able to barely scrape through uh, with about 100 points, 100, 120 points um, in quarters and semis. Um, but as Sky had mentioned before, the I think one of the most interesting parts of the entire event were actually the matches we weren't playing in, and that was the semifinal matches that Engineers and Strike Force played against the number four alliance. Um, as Sky mentioned before, there was 108 foul points that won it for the fourth alliance in uh, in match one. Um, all, they're all around great scoring. Nothing really went wrong for the first alliance in match two, so they took that one. And then uh, match three was actually probably the scariest one where the triple offense of the fourth alliance um, just overpowered uh, number one. It was still very close. Um, I, I believe a foul uh, still determined the outcome of that one, but... We were, of course, very, very nervous uh, going into the finals, playing against either alliance, and watching number four beat one um, didn't make that any better. Um, so I, I think they had put up, uh, the fourth alliance had put up 192 points in their first quarters match. They had 23 uh, teleop shots and a triple climb. So they were uh, definitely a force to be reckoned with, and it, it wasn't easy. Um, but going into finals, uh, Finals one, I think, was the first match where we had minimal dysfunctions. Our climber uh, had an, a bit of an issue, but finals two, nobody had any problems. Um, we were able to put up 189 points, and then the defense from Team 6588, I think, was also a really big factor in that end. It took the fourth alliance, um, who scored 200 points in their last semifinals match, right? Um, they I, they had 20. Uh, some odd tally op shots in their semifinal matches, and we took them down to um, in the tens, I think like 10, 10 to 15 as a collective alliance. And that was all the work of 6588. They were a pretty solid uh, third robot to pick up. Yeah, so uh, on the list that you sent me, um, I noticed that you said uh, 226 first event wins since 2003. Yeah. Um, that, that, that's awesome. I mean, yeah, that, 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 that's definitely a big deal. I'm sure you're, I'm sure the kids are ecstatic right now, man. Yeah. To, to, to have ended a drought, a blue banner drought that's older than most of the students on the team was certainly very, very exciting. Um, a lot of the students are born in like 2004, 2005, and our, we won the uh, West Michigan Regional, I think, something like that, or Great Lakes Regional back in 2003. Um, and so this is our first, and that was as a, a third alliance partner. So this is our first ever event win as an alliance captain. And um, 
it was, it was one of the most exciting events I've ever been a part of, and that's from being in first since uh, 2013. Um, so very, very exciting. Um, so yeah, we're, we're looking forward uh, very much so to the working the next four weeks on our autonomous routines. That was probably one of the biggest weaknesses we had, especially not only our robot, but our alliance. Um, we were scoring only about six balls in auto versus um, I think like 12 or something like that, 12 or 14 uh, that uh, the fourth alliance had. Um, so we'll be working on auto for the next four weeks before we compete in the Troy district, probably uh, trying to get up to at least eight. Um, so yeah, look, look out for us at, at the Troy district. We're, we're very excited to compete at that one. Yeah. So uh, one more real quick question. I got about another minute we can talk. So yep. um, Steve, you had the question. Yeah. So what, uh, Grant, what made you guys go with that Mark II swerve drive? That's what we use as well as the engineers use as well. And, you know, I'm just curious what your thought thoughts were behind going that route. So Mark II, Mark II specifically or swerve in general? Uh, well, both really. Okay. <laughs> um, swerve drive, we figured, uh, there's not a whole lot of, besides the one inch bumps, um, not a whole lot of difficulty going over, um, field elements, nah, balls, maybe a little bit, but, uh, we figured maneuverability was going to be a huge um, factor in this game, as in most games. But um, wanted to give it a shot this year, and it's obviously working out pretty well for us. The Mark II one, um, that decision, we we've seen it on other robots. It works works like a dream. Um, so yeah, we we have a Falcon and a Mini Sim driving on that one. We originally had double Falcons, but uh, Bill Materials said switch to Mini Sim. So <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, didn't really so, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, Grant, I want to thank you again for coming on to our show um, and kind of explaining your hectic weekend that you guys had and a little <laughs> bit about you and the robot. Um, on behalf of the Infimidation Show, I want to congratulate you on your win at the St. Joseph District, um, being an Alliance captain, the first win since 2003 for 226, um, and wish you the best um, pending that your event doesn't get canceled by then um, <laughs> in the rest of the season. So thanks again, man. Um, yeah. Now, while we go ahead and transition back to, over to our normal setup, uh, we're going to go ahead and take a look at a behind the bumper that Steve and I got at Kettering 2, and that is with Team 503 Frog Force. Make sure you type in th hashtag thrifty in the chat, because as soon as we get back from the Frog Force behind the bumper, we're going to go ahead and draw. Hi, I'm Steve Londo here with First Updates. Now I'm here with 503 Frog Force out of Novi, Michigan. I'm here with Unkith, Vinay, Josh, and Elise. They're going to tell us about this amazing robot. Hi, I'm Ankit, and I'm going to talk a little bit about our drivetrain this year. So we've been, we've been working on it for the past three off-seasons now, but uh, this is the first competition season we felt comfortable going with the swerve drive. And so we chose the swerve drive because it gives us more mobility on the field and allows us, and allows us to be uh, more agile. So this is a custom swerve drive. It's about our third revision of this swerve uh, setup. So we took a lot of inspiration from other teams when designing it. But uh, one thing we're really proud of in general of our swerve is the software behind it. So um, it can, it's always being controlled by some sort of input. It's always either trying to maintain its heading so that it's easier for the driver to drive it, or it's taking driver input, or it's using that the camera to lock onto the goal so that once we get ready to shoot, we can just we're already aimed and ready to ready to start shooting. And it's also tracking its location real time uh, using all of the different module angles and positions to calculate its XY position in the field. And that's all being fed into the algorithm to move it around. All right, Vinay, what part are you going to tell us about? Go ahead and talk about another component of your, ro of your robot. So I'm going to talk a little bit about the intake and the indexer on the robot. So this intake, uh, we knew that we wanted to be wide so we could intake from any part of the robot on the width. Um, so this linkage is a virtual four bar with the sprockets off ratio. What that allows for us to do is with one actuation allows us for us to both deploy the intake and change the angle so that we can minimize the number of rollers and get balls into the hopper in easily. And the indexer is special, so we knew that like other high volume shooting games, that it would be important to have a really good way to feed the balls one by one in the shooter. So we took inspiration from teams 2017's 2017 hoppers and knew that a rotary indexer would be the right way to go. So our hopper has five slots with curved hooks to keep the balls off the walls. And we can spin it at about 60 RPM and shoot ball about a full cycle of balls in a second. 
I guess I could talk about a few more features, um, specifically just with our shooter wheel. So as you can see, uh, we have our, uh, we actually have the shooter wheel over here, but then right below we have another kicker wheel that allows for our indexing to actually come through another stage and uh, allows to have a consistent and more straight shot as it goes through the shooter. I guess another thing that's really helped us in our competition um, is we noticed a problem with having different balls throughout the competition, like some that are bad and degraded. And, uh, and some that are like relatively new. So I guess one of our um, uh, one of our features is that we can consistently add layers of foam to make uh, to uh, easily add more compression, so that our shooter we can constantly adjust it throughout a competition, um, and that is really advantageous towards our shots that we shoot from the trench. And speaking of multiple shots, we also have um, a variable hood here that operates on a pneumatic. So if you want to show them like the short shot state. So this is the shooting state that we run if we were just going to shoot from the initiation line. But if we want to run from the trench, it runs the shooter at a faster speed and flips the hood down. So that allows us to have really two dialed-in shots throughout the competition. Uh, and both of those work with our vision alignment uh, if we just steer to the target. All right, thanks, guys. This has been the Behind the Bumpers with 503 Frog Force out of Novi. I'm Steve Lando reporting for First Updates Now. Yeah, uh, so as always, thank you to our friends from 503. Uh, great robot this year, custom swerve drive, washing machine, indexer. So, uh, And congratulations on your performance at Kettering 2. So uh, with that being said, uh, while Tyler's getting ready in the background, I'm going to go ahead and bring on Tyler for our vector intake wheel drawing. Uh, so, Tyler, do you want to go ahead and draw? Yep, we can go ahead and do that once again for the vector intake wheels. And we're actually going to start our next giveaway uh, right away, too. So the winner of the vector intake wheels is going to be uh, GSCZZESZ. I'm sure that means something, but a subscriber. <laughs> so lots of rigged emotes in chat uh, once again, as we have clearly rigged it for our subscribers to win uh, i just need to make sure i get that input and of course don't forget please message me on uh first updates now either on discord or on twitch uh and then we're going to start our second giveaway which is actually two separate drawings of the can based time of flight sensors from our friends at plane with fusion uh so once again uh awesome stuff uh, if you're interested in trying out some new stuff on your robot, maybe you haven't tried out time of flight sensors before, uh, but there's some top teams that are using it. Uh, so co super cool stuff. And if you're interested in winning uh, this uh, measuring, I'm sorry, the absolute distance from a target from 30 millimeters to four meters, uh, then, you know, we should, uh, you know, I had a keyword, but I feel like we should use the 100 one this time because everybody <laughs> in chat keeps asking, Go ahead, do keeps it. asking for the 100. So, so we're going to do uh, T TOF 100 for time of flight 100. So TOF dash 100. Uh, that's going to be the keyword uh, to win. There you go. See, uh, and it doesn't have to be caps either. So uh, good luck. We're going to draw for both of those uh, a little bit uh, later on in probably about 10 minutes. Yeah, thanks again, Tyler, and thanks to our friends uh, playing with Fusion. So uh, now it's time for our countdown of the top 10 teams in Michigan from last week's competition voted on by you, the fun community, in the FRC Top 25 polls. Uh, well, we will save where any of these teams finish in the overall Top 25 for the show that starts in about 20 minutes. <laughs> uh, we'll go ahead and discuss the Top 10 vote getters in FIM. Uh, we will also show the hosts of the Infimidation show uh, that think that these should land on an overall list. So um, at the number 10 spot, we got 862 Lightning. I'm sorry, at the number 10 spot, we got 862 Lightning Robotics. Uh, coming in at 9, 3620 Average Joes. Coming in at number 8, 503 Frog Force. Number 7, 2054 Tech Vikes. Number 6, 1684 The Chimeras. Number 5, 67 The Hot Team. Number 4, 1023 Bedford Express. Number 3, 226 Hammerheads. Number 2, 2767 Strike Force. And number 1, for the second week in a row is team 2337, the engine nerds. What do you guys think about this list? So I think uh, my team 2767 uh, is riding a little high on the, on the hype train still a little bit. Um, if you look purely at our uh, Saturday performance, then yeah, maybe I could see a number two, but if you look at the weekend in a totality, uh, no, we should be lower. Um, beyond that, I think, uh, the average Joes should be up a little bit higher, maybe number six or seven. Yeah, um, I agree with uh, mostly what Sky said. Um, I like seeing nerds that high again. Great stuff out of them as usual. Um, 
I'm really happy with what they have produced. And uh, uh, to ask you, I'm frustrated to not see 35-34 on there. Tanner, what do you got? Yeah, uh, I would have liked to at least see one team from Kingsford on the list. But <laughs> looking at like the level of competition, and uh, Kingsford is pretty evenly matched, whereas some of the other ones got you know the higher end teams, yep. and obviously yep. the lower you go. So other than that, I wasn't able to watch any other events uh, last weekend. So really, I've got no opinion up there. Hopefully, uh, they done the team justice. <laughs> What about you, Steve? Yeah, so if you only watched Friday matches or the, the rankings, you'd be very surprised to see 1684 on that list. However, the way they performed Saturday and during eliminations at Kettering 2, I think it justifies their spot. They have kind of hit their stride now. Uh, like Nick, I'm very surprised to see 35-34 not on that list at all if you're going 10-2 and two and captaining the winning alliance at Kettering 2. Um, but Nick, you've got a, our host top 10. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, so uh, real briefly, we're going to kind of go through um, because we don't have a ton of time left and I want to get through the re- or the previews. So number 10, 2054 Tech Vikes. Um, and what you're going to see is in parentheses next to their town is how many points they got. Uh, we do linear. Uh, I missed Frog Force on there, but Frog Force has 10 just for reference. Uh, so number 10, 2054 Tech Vikes. Number 9, 3620 Average Joes. Number 8, 503 Frog Force. Number seven, 3534 House of Cards. See, it's about time they get some love. Uh, <laughs> number six, 1684 The Chimeras. Number five, 2767 Strike Force. Uh, personally, I think that this is the spot where they should be at. Uh, number four, 226 Hammerheads. Number three, 2337 Engineers. Number two, 67 The Hot Team. And number one, 1023 Bedford Express. Um, anything real quick to add before we go into previews, guys? Uh, Bedford belongs to be up there. They did great. Yep, I agree. All right, so with that being said, previews, let's go ahead and start them. Uh, Tanner, what do we got in Escanaba? Yeah, so Escanaba looks to be on the same level as event as Kingsford uh, this week. Honestly, Escanaba kind of looks to be a repeat of Kingsford week two. Uh, there are about 20 teams that have previously competed at Kingsford, and overall 23 teams that have competed at a second event, or this will be their second event. Uh, on top of that, there are four rookie teams making an appearance, two of which will be competing at their uh, this event for their very first time. Uh, some of the cop- top contenders I see coming into Escanaba, uh, 2856 Copper Bots, uh, 4391 Brave Bots, uh, 6569 Gladiators, 6637 Beta Wolves, and 7782, the Wolverine Circuit Breakers, all all of which were at the Kingsford event and I was able to see firsthand. Uh, for Chairmans and EI, I can I think the contenders are looking to be 3602 Robomos and 56, uh, oops, sorry. 2586, the copper bots from Calumet. Uh, how's Belleville looking, Nick? Yeah, so uh, Belleville actually seems to stack up fairly well against the other FIM events this season. Uh, a few teams I'm looking to see make a good show. Uh, 33 Killer Bees coming off the Southfield semifinal exit. Expecting big, th- big things out of them and looking to improve. Uh, 1250 Gator Bots, who released their robot on Chief a couple days ago, looks great. A um, few others, 2137 Oxford Robocats, formerly Torque. Uh, 3641 Flying Toasters. And 5050 Cowtown Robotics. Uh, like I said earlier, really expecting bees to bounce back after that of uh, after uh, Southfield and truly show what they're made of. Um, I've heard they've made some improvements and expect some higher level play out of them. I uh, haven't seen Cowtown yet. In Michigan had a big uh, had a two big past years. Uh, expecting to see good things out of them. Thirty six forty one, good as always. Um, and Dark Horses two forty Tempest was at Southfield. They got a really consistent climb. Um, watch out for them. So uh, go Sky. What do we got for Gold Lake? Um, so for several years now, uh, Robo Jackets have kind of been the ones rolling into Go Lake. Uh, they are the runaway favorites for this year, and it's a this is a solid opportunity for some of the midfield teams to kind of establish themselves as those um, maybe three through six seeds. Um, and then, so there's one thing in here that could really throw this one way or the other is uh, really what the the climb situation looks like. Because so we've seen some events. Um, with lots of good climbers, just due to luck of the draw, kind of uh, really influencing things uh, with uh, kind of nullifying Teleot points. Um, my hot take from that is that the number one seed, whoever it is, uh, isn't going to be able to do better than nine and three at the event. Um, so um, if that happens to be RoboJackets again, I fully expect them to uh, rip apart their robot because the robot's no good. Um, just, just kidding. Um, Chairman's has already been nabbed. Uh, by the Petoskey Paladins and Ramageddon, uh, both of which have events. That leaves a little bit of room to burst into the scene. Uh, 1940 Tech Tigers uh, landed it in Gull Lake last year. However, uh, 4381 the Twisted Devils may put up a bit of a fight. Um, what's happening uh, up the road in Muskegon? 
Yeah, uh, Muskegon looks to be a good one as usual. Uh, Held at Orchard View High School in Muskegon. Uh, top teams that I'm looking to make a splash, 17-11, the Raptors, 2075 Enigma, uh, 3357 Comets, uh, with the robot on the screen right there, uh, and 3572 Wavelength. Um, last year's state champions, 3604 Goon Squad's also here. Uh, a few teams that I expect to surprise some people, 4004 Mars Rovers, who were Detroit finalists last year, uh, as well as 4967, that one team who was Detroit finalists in 2018. Uh, Chairman's looks to be led by 3357 The Comets as they are reaching for another win on that side of things. So, so uh, Steve, what do we got in Detroit? Yeah, so this event has quite a few teams that I'm personally really unfamiliar with. So with that caveat, I'm going to say that um, the favorite heading to this event is either 503 Frog Force after a strong showing at Kettering 2 or 1025 IMPI Robotics, who they always come to play. They're a solid, solid team. Um, I think in the mix contending for the top seed at this event will also be 3668, the Trobrots from Whitmore Lake. Last year's winner at this event, 2224 Robo Phoenix from Detroit and Possibly 2960 Automation Nation for Birmingham, although they didn't fare too well in their in the Indiana district that they went to last week, ranking 23rd and going out in three matches and quarters. Uh, I think Chairman's, since it already went to 503 Frog Force at Kettering 2, it's probably 1025 IMPI Robotics. Um, and they, 503 Frog Force may take Engineering Inspiration home instead. Uh, I'm not really sure who else can compete for these awards here. Looking at team histories, I'm not seeing very many chairman's wins from teams outside of 503 and 1025. So, Nick, uh, back to you. Yeah, uh, so really quick, Tyler ran the poll for which week three events are you most looking forward to? Um, and Belleville comes out with the win. So uh, thanks again for that recap, Steve. Uh, before we end the show, we are going to go ahead and draw for those two time of flight sensors from our friends at Plane with Fusion. Uh, Tyler, take it away. Yep. So once again, uh, it was uh, TOF-100 uh, for the keyword if you're interested in winning that. So we're going to draw two separate times. Uh, once again, just always have to reiterate because this keeps coming up. If you win something, we're shipping something to you or the supplier is shipping something to you. And if you've ever received a package before, things that you need for that are your first name, last name, mailing address, which also includes like your city and zip code and country. And if you want to track oh, an email as well, too, I know I can't oh. believe I have to keep saying this, but it happens 90 percent of the time. I don't understand it. I know that the age of the Internet, apparently mail doesn't exist anymore, but I thought people still ordered stuff off of Amazon. Apparently not. <laughs> so with that said, uh, the first winner is going to be uh, Hillel G. Congratulations. Uh, so, yep. Subscriber. Subscribers are pulling out strong today, guys. So uh, subscriber wins that. And the next one is going to be TJP 503, which I'm guessing is probably on 503. That'd probably be a good guess. So uh, congratulations on that. Lots of rigged emotes in chat. Clearly rigged it. Uh, we do have, if you're watching live, uh, more giveaways coming up uh, during the FRC Top 25 show as well. So stay tuned for that. Yeah, thanks again, Tyler, and thanks to our friends at Playing With Fusion. Uh, so really quick before we end the show, I want to mention something real quick. If you haven't had a chance to look at it yet, um, FIM did release a statement on the COVID virus. Um, go ahead and check it out on First in Michigan. And um, they mentioned some stuff about safety lessons, so if you haven't seen it, go ahead and check it out. So uh, that's all we have time for tonight, though. Thanks to everyone for hanging out with us. Uh, Fun needs your help to stay live, loud, and independent. Uh, please, con please consider giving your support by joining Fun Nation with a subscription or bits on Twitch, becoming a Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now, or just letting people in first know this is the place to be to get the information your team needs. Don't forget to check us out on Discord, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and live on Twitch. Fun fans, Clips of the Week are open again. Don't forget to submit your favorite or funny Clips of the Weeks to our fun Discord by Monday at 5 p.m. ET every Monday. On behalf of myself, Sky, Steve, and Tanner, and our producer Tyler, I would like to thank you for tuning in, and thank you to all of our moderators in chat. The next show is the FRC Top 25. See where your favorite first in Michigan teams landed on this week's FRC Top 25. Good night. Thanks for watching. If you want more fun content, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. You can also directly help support fun by visiting our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.